In today's video, we are going to be answering the question, what causes insulin resistance? And also going over how it can lead to type 2 diabetes and PCOS. Insulin resistance has become an epidemic. It is thought to affect over 80% of American adults, although most cases go undiagnosed. Insulin resistance is the main cause of poor metabolic health, leading to excess abdominal fat, high blood pressure, and difficulty losing weight. All of these symptoms are extremely common, which signifies just how widespread insulin resistance is. Now, the reason that insulin resistance goes so largely undiagnosed is because doctors do not routinely test fasting insulin. They focus on fasting glucose, but the reality is, is that your glucose can be normal, but your insulin can be elevated. Insulin resistance starts up to 10 years before you're gonna to start to see your fasting blood sugar increase. And here is a fun, or actually not so fun fact. Insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome are the exact same thing. Metabolic syndrome actually used to be called insulin resistance syndrome. So if you know that you have metabolic syndrome but you are unsure if you have insulin resistance or not, unfortunately you do. And in case you're not familiar, metabolic syndrome is characterized by five main symptoms. A large waist circumference, high triglycerides, low HDL cholesterol, high blood pressure, and high fasting blood sugar. To be diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, you have to have at least three of these symptoms. But even if you have two, or even if you have one, that can signify some insulin resistance. So in today's video, we are going to be simplifying what causes insulin resistance and talking about how it can lead to type 2 diabetes and PCOS. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate, and I am a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos here on YouTube twice a week talking about insulin resistance, blood sugar management, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you want to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram, where I share new posts every single day. What is insulin resistance? Insulin is a hormone whose main role is to signal our cells to taking glucose, aka blood sugar. When our blood sugar goes up, after we eat, for example, the pancreas releases insulin, which takes the excess glucose from our bloodstream to our cells. Insulin resistance occurs when our cells are no longer responding correctly to the signals from insulin. They don't efficiently take in the excess blood glucose from our cells. This leads to insulin levels remaining high for long periods of time, for longer than it should. And it is these high levels of insulin that lead to the symptoms and side effects. Some of these include excess abdominal fat, skin tags, and dark patches of skin. But high insulin also causes your HDL cholesterol to decrease and your triglycerides to increase. But why do our cells start resisting insulin in the first place? When we eat foods rich in carbohydrates, these carbohydrates are broken down by the body into glucose, and this glucose enters our bloodstream. And when it enters our bloodstream, our blood glucose will rise. Insulin is then released by the pancreas to deal with the excess sugar in the blood, taking it out of the bloodstream and to our cells that need it. And this is a normal function of the body. Our bodies are equipped to deal with these fluctuations in blood sugar. However, if we are constantly eating high carb foods throughout the day, our blood sugar is constantly rising and might not even have time to come back down to baseline before we eat again. So more insulin is pumped out to deal with the blood sugar which has remained high and our cells become overwhelmed and start resisting the actions of insulin because they're already filled with glucose. And this turns into a vicious cycle where high insulin is causing insulin resistance and then the insulin resistance is causing high insulin. And the problem gets progressively worse until it starts to manifest as other diseases. Having high glycemic variability, which is when your blood sugar levels fluctuate a lot throughout the day, is associated with insulin resistance. Because if your blood sugar is always spiking, this means your body has to pump out a lot of insulin to deal with it. 
And if your insulin doesn't have a chance to come back down before you eat your next meal, then your insulin is going to remain high and this is where the problem starts. Having high insulin is known as hyperinsulinemia and it's this hyperinsulinemia that actually leads to the symptoms, the side effects, and eventually the other diseases. Now, one thing I wanna note is that diet is not the only factor that impacts insulin sensitivity. Sleep or lack of sleep plays a big role as well. Studies have shown that even just one night of poor sleep makes us temporarily insulin resistant the entire next day. So making sure you are getting good quality sleep is vital. I do have other videos on improving sleep, which I will link above, but my number one top tip, which I just wanna tell you about quickly, is to manage your light exposure. Light is a key indicator for circadian rhythm. Getting natural light as much as possible during the day, and especially first thing in the morning, helps to set our sleep-wake cycle. This signals our bodies that it's daytime and hormones are released to energize us. And minimizing light exposure, and blue light specifically, after sunset, signals our bodies that it's nighttime and it's almost time to go to bed. And hormones are released, such as melatonin, to make us sleepy. So get off your electronics in the evening because these emit so much blue light, they mess with our sleep so, so much. Or another option is to get a pair of blue light blocking glasses, put these on two to three hours before you're gonna go to sleep. They block 100% of blue light. Melatonin will be released when it should, and you're gonna get a good night's sleep. I will link to the glasses I wear and that I recommend. They're from a brand called Blue Blocks in the description box down below. Type two diabetes. Type two diabetes is defined by having high fasting blood sugar or hyperglycemia. And the way that it relates to insulin resistance is that insulin resistance actually causes type two diabetes. Because in the early stages of insulin resistance, we touched on this a little bit earlier, the excess insulin that's being pumped out is enough to deal with the excess glucose. So your blood sugar will remain normal even though your insulin is high. And this is why, again, insulin resistance often gets missed. Doctors aren't testing fasting insulin, they're only looking at glucose. But insulin resistance can start 10 years before your fasting glucose increases. We could catch insulin resistance years earlier if testing fasting insulin was routine and prevent type two diabetes in a lot of cases. Because as time goes on, your body isn't able to produce enough insulin to keep up with all the excess glucose. And that's when you're gonna start to see your fasting blood sugar creep up. Eventually, it's going to increase enough that you'll be diagnosed with prediabetes and then type two diabetes. PCOS. PCOS, which stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome, is the number one cause of female infertility worldwide. In Western countries, one of 10 women childbearing age have it. Symptoms of PCOS include missed periods, weight gain, excess hair growth, and acne. Women with PCOS often have a hard time getting pregnant and they seek out infertility treatments. And a lot of women are surprised to hear the connection between PCOS and insulin resistance because like type two diabetes, the vast majority of PCOS cases are actually caused by insulin resistance. So to be diagnosed with PCOS, you have to have two out of the three main symptoms. You have to have an irregular period, ovarian cysts, and or high testosterone. And I know that there's a lot of confusion surrounding PCOS. A lot of women who are diagnosed with it are told that all they can do is manage symptoms, that it can't be reversed. Actually, that's the same for type two diabetes. A lot of people don't know that there's anything they can really do to reverse it. But in both cases, it is possible. For both PCOS and type two diabetes, metformin is a commonly prescribed drug. And what's interesting about metformin is the way it works is it improves insulin sensitivity which goes to show that insulin resistance is at the root of both of these diseases. For women with PCOS especially, metformin does an amazing job at improving symptoms. 90% of women with PCOS 
that are prescribed metformin see improvements. However, metformin isn't a cure-all. Yes, it does have benefits, but it also comes with a lot of side effects, some of which can be pretty serious. I'm going to link a video about metformin for PCOS, the pros and the cons up above if you want to learn more about that. But I think it's important to note that there are other ways to improve insulin sensitivity and reverse PCOS and reverse insulin resistance. And these can be done naturally. But anyways, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's talk about how insulin resistance causes PCOS. So it is actually hyperinsulinemia, which you will remember means high insulin, that causes the three main symptoms of PCOS and the other symptoms as well. <laughs> Every month, just before ovulation, there should be a big spike in the hormone estrogen. All estrogen is made from testosterone, but high insulin levels, hyperinsulinemia, block the ovaries from converting it. And the spike in estrogen doesn't happen because enough isn't being converted. So you don't ovulate, the eggs remain in the ovaries and become cysts. You don't have a period because you didn't ovulate. And because not enough testosterone was converted to estrogen, you were left with high testosterone levels as a result. And those are the three main symptoms that we spoke about earlier. Now, before we wrap up, I know this video was just supposed to be about the cause of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes and PCOS, but, and I talked about this a little bit, I just want to say that it can be reversed. It is not something you have to live with. It is not something that can only be managed with a few small diet and lifestyle tweaks, you can improve your insulin sensitivity, reduce your symptoms, and become metabolically healthy once again. And I'm gonna link a video that I did up above that has 10 simple steps you can take to reverse insulin resistance. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have been diagnosed with insulin resistance or if you haven't been diagnosed but you suspect you have it. Let me know down below and if you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss an upload. Click that like button if you enjoyed this video and feel free to share it with a friend. If you did enjoy this video, you might enjoy my video on other diseases that are caused by insulin resistance. You can check it out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.